A few weeks ago, I got to hang out with ace photographer and YouTuber Gary Goff down on Dartmoor as he made a video for his YouTube channel about woodland photography. I thought it would be fun to do some behind the scenes, what goes into making a YouTube video, as well as to get some hints and tips from Gary because he knows what he's doing. And woodland photography is not something I really do. I struggle with it. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you pause this one for a moment, click the link in the top right, go and check it out, and then come back here. If you'd like to see my early attempts at woodland photography, there is a link in the description below to an album where you can go and have a look and you'll discover I need a lot more practice. There are also links to Gary's YouTube as well as to his website. Check him out, he is one of the good guys. Now, whilst we were down there, I got an opportunity to sit down and put some of your questions to Gary. There was some really interesting and insightful answers. It was a good fun conversation and that's where we're going in just a moment. But before we do, please remember to like, share and subscribe to this video. It helps me make more. Anyway, without further ado, off to Dartmoor. Have you got the shots that you want? Yet. No, not yet. I think because we did it around so much yesterday, because there was a lot of filming between us both, um, I've already said this on my camera, what I'm annoyed about is we arrived here at the woods at the end of the path that takes you straight to the woods and of course as you can imagine everybody who comes here will, will end up at the same place and we spent pretty much all afternoon dithering around without moving more than 20 feet away from that area and that's one thing that I always tell people you must do. You must do. Like honeypot locations, photograph honeypot locations, I've got no problem with that. But once you've done that, then try your best to make it your own. Yeah. And at the moment, I feel that that probably might be the honeypot location or certainly the location everybody will photograph. But at the moment, I haven't made it my own yet. But also, you know, it's, it's chasing light. It's <clears throat> waiting for the light to change. The light just changed just then. Yeah, just you then, know? yeah. It's like yeah. watching for those moments and being ready for them. And then on top of that, you're trying to monitor things like fogged up sensors this morning, and <laughs> issues with audio. I drop my camera. You drop your camera <laughs> and then, you know, you sort of, you do a whole brilliant piece to camera and then you suddenly realise you weren't recording or you double press the thing accidentally and you've got to do it yeah. all again and you've just missed the shot. And yeah. Or the light changes and then you set the camera up and then by the time you've done that, the light's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of work. If you combine all of that, so I'm going to continue okay taking shots i might be here another couple of hours see if i can grab some better shots than the ones i feel i've already got combine that with the length of time it's taking to come down here the length of time i'm away from the studio then i have to post process it and then we're not even talking about the 150 pound of fuel it's taken then you post process the video upload it and somebody will call, comment by saying Oh, I can't believe you didn't do this or I can't believe you didn't. And you're like, Jesus Christ, all that work I've just done, all the expense, all the time, all the effort. And all you could say is, yeah. I don't like the dappled light how long that you comes reckon, to the canopy. How long do you reckon you'll spend on the edit? Uh, a day. It's usually a day per video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always reckon it's, it's 10, 10 to 15 hours. Depends how complicated it is. If you're lucky, yeah. you get away with an eight-hour edit, I yeah. suppose. But I, I, I tend... I, may, I, I might overwork my edits though, but I'm just so particular. You know, yeah. I, all of the movements, all of the ins and outs, all of the cutting is all done to the music. It doesn't just happen, it's no. all done to the music. Now yeah. it might well be, people might notice that. It might well be people never notice that, in which case I'm wasting my time. When I worked in television, it was one of those things that I learned to do there. And it's one of those things that people probably don't notice, but at the end they'll go, that was a good little video, and they won't quite know why. It's little little things like that which stash Possibly. up. Possibly. I did a, a question on my um, uh, f Facebook page and on the Clickersnap user group Facebook okay. page and just said I was going to be hanging out with you, and then we've got a few questions. Are you all right with that? Let's see if we can do them. Yeah. I'm surprised you got a response. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Gary, who? Did, did you get any of them? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne Williams just asked, somebody recently suggested focus stacking for landscapes. Do you think it makes a big difference to the overall clarity? I do, but it's only relevant if something, if, a, if something that's important is very close to the camera. If your depth of field isn't going to cover it, 
yep. because something is that close. It's yep. so close within the infinity point of the lens that you cannot get. I mean, 99% of, uh, of, of, of my photography is literally focusing a third of the way in and if you focus a third of the way to the, the, the landscape at f8 or f11, that'll give you a great enough depth of field for everything to be nice and sharp in the image. The only time that ever changes is if there's a flower of interest or a point of interest really close to the camera that you know the eye's gonna be drawn to, and it's closer than a third, then that needs to be sharp. If it's not sharp, somebody will turn off from your picture straight away. Absolutely. So don't don't overdo it. What I would say is don't overdo it, but do it if you feel it's necessary. Do it if you feel it's necessary. The main key is understanding about when you focus really close to your lens, then you may not have enough depth of field to carry to the horizon because you are just inside your own infinity point. You're not beyond it, you're inside it. And then you can focus stack and make a difference. If you're beyond that distance, it doesn't matter, it won't make any difference at all, there's no point focus stacking, it's, it's in focus already. Crystal Craig asked, what was your biggest miss during your entire career? Left a memory card at home, wrong place, wrong time, all that stuff. <laughs> I, did, I did a video once with my good friend Mally, there was a storm just before uh, Covid hit, there was a storm and I was rushing out the door and I was having a bit of an argument with the wife and I rushed out the door and I got a phone call about 45 minutes into my journey. Now, bearing in mind what I do for a living, the wife said, you've left your camera back. <laughs> now, I've done lots of bad things or lots of stupid things in my life, but nothing more ridiculous than leaving your camera bag with all your equipment in it behind when, when, just to point out, this is what you do for a living. It's like leaving your football boots at home if you're a football player. It's that ridiculous. I've done it. I've done oh, yeah. it. I've done it. I've done it. I left a bag full of cameras down, down somewhere anyway. Never yeah. mind. So John Cantrell asked, uh, what's the single hardest thing you've had to learn in order to make your great landscape images? Oh, that's an, that's an oddball question. Mm. I don't know how to answer that question. I'll tell you the reason why is because, like you, I've been doing photography since 1979. So if I struggle with photography, it was so long ago, I forgot the hardships of it. Yeah. And, and very quickly, because photography isn't difficult to get to grips with, once you understand how your exposure triangle works, then basically everything else is just composition. And, oh, it's, totally. there's, and there's, it's just light, it's so simple. There's five controls on a camera you need to learn how to use, in my opinion. You've yeah. got your shutter, your aperture, your ISO how to operate your autofocus system to make sure you get that's your it. focus where you want it and understanding how focal length changes the appearance of an image. And that's it. That's it. There isn't any more. It's like yeah. once you've learned that, you've learned that for life. Yeah. I, I, I suppose that the hardest thing really that I've had to learn is not to be lazy. And that's my number one. My number one point is forget cameras, forget how to use cameras because that comes a second nature to me now. Again, I don't want to sound that to sound conceited, no, but, but it, I've been doing it for a long time like yourself. Yeah. But... It's too easy to be lazy. Absolutely, absolutely. Look at the work. Look at all the climbing up and down over these rocks. Look at the, oh. the hidden holes we stuck legs in and nearly broken them, and, and, the, and the hiking backwards and forwards. And that was just and filming and this. <laughs> it was. Yeah, Seriously. It was. Yeah. It's, um, it is. You're right. Don't be lazy. Yeah. And be patient. Yeah. I think is, a, is an important Hopefully one. Hopefully, I've, I've answered um, your question there. Yeah. Bob Pierce asked, how do you rate Wales's chances in the internationals that are coming up? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of question is that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I went, I've no idea what he's talking about, but well, you might. Well, the only saving grace with uh, the group that Wales are in is they've got a very easy group and they shouldn't lose any of the games. I mean, one of the games they've got coming up is against England. I can't now, believe you're awesome. Now, if you can't beat England... <laughs> Is that not a good answer? I can't believe your answer. <laughs> if, you, if you can't beat England, Wales, we've got a problem. <laughs> Come on, Gareth Thale. There you go. I am a quarter Welsh. My grandfather is a, was a Welshman. So there you go. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Michael Isles asked, why do you like the ice rink look for your water shots so much? Yeah, I get asked that a lot and some people moan at me quite a bit. Oh, you always do the same thing. I think the, the only reason why I like them is because it's more arty than just turning up with a camera. You know, if you look at cameras now on smartphones, 
they're pretty much near as good as, as most people's cameras. Mm. So when you're stood amongst 20 other people, all taking pictures, the chances are all 20 people will come away with the same picture. Unless you've got a slight inkling uh, or inclination into how your camera works, which means that you can change the dynamic of that picture. If you do that, you'll, the chances are you'll be the only one that does that. And on top of that, I personally like it. Mm. And that, I suppose, is more important than anything. That is more important than anything. People are often saying, how do I create my own style? You don't. You photograph what you like and what you love, and yep. that is your style. It's that yeah. simple. Yeah, and there, some people will like it, and you'll, have, you'll be trolled for it, and you'll be vilified, and you'll yep. also have people love it. The rules are, as long as, as long as it's technically right, the image, as long as there's nothing overexposed, missing detail, that's one of the biggest bugbears for me in an, in an image, is when people produce images with missing detail. I really can't stand that. Then really, at the end of the day, you know, be your own, be your own person. Absolutely. Create your own work. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are you. Be you. Can we go back to Wales again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tickled you that, didn't it? Yeah, it just made me laugh so much. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to throw it in there, um, as I'm sure Bob did. Um, Tony Duke asked, uh, do you prefer landscape to any other genre of photography? Uh, he said, I follow you, he follows you, uh, and he thinks that your street vids are really rather good. I don't do enough street photography, I should do. Basically, I love, I love all genres of photography, and I'm a bit weird. We had this conversation last night, didn't we, in the pub, in that I love wedding photography, because mm. you get, wedding photography, you... you if you're a wedding photographer, you get to be quite a controlling person, or you can be quite a controlling person on a wedding day. And I love that. I love taking people who are very shy behind a camera, you know, and all of a sudden they come away thinking, oh my God, you know, I've never seen myself look so good in a, in a picture and, and all the, you know, the creative light in that I like to play around with. So I love wedding photography or portraiture photography. I mean, portrait, portraiture photography is something I've never done on this channel. But uh, mm. no, I mean... I started off by doing landscape photography to get me away from the studio, to be a little bit different. And then I suppose it's taken over my life to a certain extent, which I'm definitely, definitely not unhappy with. Mm, absolutely. And it's very difficult to self-film street photography or mm. weddings or things like that, because, you know, at least with the landscape, you, you know, you put the camera on the tripod and you, you have to dick around with light and sound and all the rest of it. And yeah. you still miss the shots with street. I see. I'm going to have to check out some of your street videos. I... And another reason why I like landscape photography is just look around. Yeah, it gets you just, out into the world. Just look where we are. Appreciate. You know, I'm where lucky. We are. I'm lucky to do this as a job like you are, because there's so many, so many people now that might end up watching my video. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm lucky to, to, to be doing this for a, a, a job because there's lots of people that probably end up watching my video having done a long day at the office. Like an accountant, for instance. Mm. You know what I mean? And like I always say, this is the view from my office window today and there's nothing better. Yeah, sorry about the rather abrupt ending there. We began to waffle, but I hope you enjoyed that little conversation with Gary. He is a good guy. And once again, please go and check out his YouTube as well as his website. There is plenty of good stuff in there. I hope you enjoyed that little video and I look forward to seeing you next time.